Calculating the numbers on rental properties can be so confusing. If you don't know what the capitalization rate is, the net operating income is, what's your cash on cash return, how to figure out what your cash flow should be, and all of these other expenses that go with running a property, it could just leave you very frustrated. But in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down every single cost that you should look at and you should be informed about when analyzing a rental property. So let's get into it. All right, guys, today we're gonna be going over this rental property analysis, how to calculate the numbers on a rental property using the four pillar method. And I'm gonna be talking about analyzing a property from start to finish. And what are the four key variables, the four parts, the four methods of analyzing a rental property that you need to know. So again, in this video, we're gonna be uh, analyzing this duplex. And again, the numbers are made up here and I just wanna make sure that you understand all the things that you need to know when you are analyzing a rental, a single family house, a multifamily house. So let's get into it. So one of the key metrics, uh, the formulas that you need to know when you're doing this is there's four variations. So there's four things that you need to know which are uh, the asking price. So here I've just put simple numbers. We're gonna say the asking price for this duplex is $300,000. Okay, now the second thing you want to know is your down payment. Is it gonna be 5%, is it gonna be 10%, is it gonna be 20%, right? So now, uh, depending on what state you're in or province, usually you need about a 20% down payment. So we're gonna put that in here. And in my, uh, in my formula, in my uh, calculator here, I can, I can select what I want, 25%, 20%, 15%, and it's gonna auto-populate those numbers for me. You know, and so again, based on a 20% down, it's already telling me that my total mortgage here is gonna be $240,000. Now let's say uh, the interest rate is 3.6, right? So your first uh, thing you need to figure out is your purchase price. Your second uh, formula you need to figure out or your number you need to figure out is your down payment. What's the percentage? The third thing you need to figure out is your interest rate, right? Because that's gonna determine uh, how much of principal and interest you're paying on the mortgage. And even furthermore, what's your monthly net cash flow gonna be based on what you have to pay in your mortgage payments. And I'm not even talking about expenses and we're gonna get into that later. And the last thing, the last number you need in these four part method is your amortization, right? Is it a 15 year amortization? Is it a 20 year, 25 year? So in this example, we're gonna use 25 years for simple numbers, right? Now. And the first thing you want to figure out here, you know, when I look at a property, um, I want to look and I want to figure out what my my return is going to be. What's my return on my investment? And I'm going to get into that. You know how you figure that out. So in here, you know, in this uh, in this deal. So this is a duplex and and I'll get into that a little bit later here. So this example, you know, we need to figure out what our monthly property taxes are. So, again, it's going to depend if you're paying the property taxes or so you are paying the property taxes but are you paying on a annual basis, monthly basis? So all of this, all of these numbers here are gonna be based on the fact that we're paying monthly insurance, monthly utilities, monthly property taxes. So in this example, we're gonna pay $260 a month to property tax. We're gonna pay $117 a month uh, insurance. And on this example, this is a duplex where all of the units are self-contained. So meaning they're paying their own utility. So there is no water and hydro costs for us. Uh, my repair and my maintenance, on average, uh, people have different formulas. I like to take 5% of my gross rent that I earn and I put it into a side account and I don't even touch it. And that money just sits there. Every single month I take 5% off my gross rent and I put it into a repair and maintenance account. This should be part of running your numbers because you don't wanna, you don't wanna take all the gross income and say, hey, that's my cash flow. Well, that's not. You gotta factor in what are your expenses. And part of that is setting aside money every month for repairs and maintenance. For So in this example, I've used 5% here. So this tells me based on the fact that I'm getting $2,000 on the upper unit and $2,000 on the lower unit here. So I'm making a monthly gross income of $4,000. So 5% of $4,000 is $200. So again, you can see that it auto populated that in here. I'm also going to put uh, property management. So again, depending on if you're doing it, maybe you're not charging anything to the, to the property on property management, or maybe you have a third party. For us, we have in-house property management and we pay 10%. So I'm going to put that in here. So property management uh, is 10%. So again, 
what's 10% of $4,000 of gross income? Like I told you guys, it's 10%, which is $400 a month. So again, every single month, I'm gonna take $400 and I'm gonna pay my property manager to manage this property. Uh, so on this particular deal, we have uh, strata fees or condo fees, so that's $90. And we're gonna put that into a side account. And also rental vacancy, right? If this property was vacant, you know, again, you wanna account for that cost. Now, depending on what state you're in, what province you're in, a great resource uh, for you is to go to your tenancy branch, your uh, local tenancy branch, and they'll tell you uh, what your rental vacancy is, right? So again, or you can even call a realtor or even a commercial uh, banker. They usually know this information, or you can just go on Google and find it out yourself uh, after some research. So let's say we're gonna use a 3% vacancy. So again, th this is not that you, not that you're gonna spend this every single month, but you wanna have this money set aside that if you had a tenant move out or you had someone that could have paid their rent and you had to evict them, and now let's say the property is sitting empty for a month, well, you wanna account for those costs. Even if you don't have a rental vacancy every single month, you wanna put that and you're being conservative. That's the key. You don't want to run this deal like, hey, it's a perfect deal. I'm not gonna have any repairs every month. I'm not gonna have a vacancy every month. So again, this is all money that I'm getting in my account and I'm gonna be spending that money. That's not what you wanna do because that's how you're gonna get burned. You wanna be conservative in your numbers, right? So now the other thing that I've put here is, uh, what I call cash required to close. What's this property gonna uh, cost me out of my own pocket to buy it, right? If I put 20% down based on a $300,000 purchase price, uh, how much money do I have to bring to the table? So here you can see that again, based on a 20% down on a $300,000 purchase, I'm gonna have $60,000 as a down payment. I have to bring that to a bank. I gotta show the bank that I have that money in an account. Now, again, we're just making up these numbers here. Let's say my inspection, I got a home inspector, that's $1,000 a month. I get title insurance on this home. Basically, that's protecting me from any fraudulent activities or any work that was done from the previous owner where they didn't pull permits or anything like that. I always suggest you buy title insurance and usually your lawyer can do this as well. So again, that's a cost for me to buy this property, so I put that in there. And let's say on this deal, it's not a burr, you're not renovating it, uh, it's just turnkey, it's a turnkey property, so I have zero initial improvement, so I'll put zero there. My land transfer tax to buy this property, to register this uh, property, this title, to register it from the previous owner to my name, it's gonna cost money, so you gotta pay land transfer tax on that. Let's say my legal costs are $800, so my cash required, so the money that I had to bring in on this deal is $63,700. So keep that in mind because what I wanna do is we need to figure out what our return on our investment is gonna be. So to do that, let's go to this, uh, let's go to this formula here, right? So again, we're calculating the numbers on a rental property and we're gonna be using the four part method here for you guys. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna you wanna figure out what your return on your investment in, it, return on your investment is. And how to do that is, I'm gonna break it down here for you. You need to know what your monthly net profit is, right? What is your monthly net profit on this property based on the expenses, the mortgage that you have to pay? And so for us, that's what this is. Uh, let me shut this down here. So for us, our net profit here, our monthly estimated net profit is $1,619 a month. Again, this is based on our total monthly income, right? We're getting $2,000 upstairs, $2,000 on the lower unit on this duplex. We have 2,381 of expenses. So again, if you take 4,000, you subtract it to 2,381, that's gonna give you a net cash flow of 1619, right? So let's go back to our sheet here. Now, you don't wanna use monthly figures, you wanna look at annual figures to figure out your return on your investment, right? So what you would do here is again, like step number two here, you wanna look at your annual net profit. So you take, you take the 16, 19 a month that you're making a net positive cash flow, multiply that by 12, so 12 months, that's gonna give you $19,428. Now you take the 19,000 and this is this is the important part to figure out the ROI the return on your investment. You want to take your annual net cash flow which was 
$19,428. And you want to divide that over the initial money that you invested, right? So again, going back to this formula, what was our initial amount? It was $63,700, right? We put that money, that was money that we had to bring out of our pocket to buy this deal, right? So you take the 19,428, you divide it by the $63,700. Again, that's cash invested. That's gonna give you a percentage, right? So again, this should be a percentage here that it's actually 30.49, but you wanna round it off. So it's 30.5. So your ROI, your return on your investment, the return on the money that you put into this deal, $63,700, based on the fact that you're making 19,428 of net cash flow a year, it's giving you a very good return on your money, return on your investment, right? So on here in my formula, right here, it's auto-populated, right? So again, this sheet does it for me. Again, I'm breaking it down for you guys so you understand the, the metrics around it and how to figure that out. Now, when it comes to real estate, everybody has different figures. I personally, so me, when I buy a deal or when I'm looking at analyzing a property, using this formula, using this Excel sheet, I wanna look at at least 10, 12, 13% uh, annually on a rental property. If I'm only making 5% ROI or 4%, to me, that's not a good deal. You know, I can do that better. I can do better than that in a stock market. So again, I look at those numbers and for you, that might be different, but I always suggest you wanna at least be making 10, 12, 13, 14% even more on a property, right? Now, the second thing you wanna figure out, the, the really important thing, the metrics that real estate investors should look at is the cap rate, the capitalization rate. And basically what it looks at is it looks, this takes into consideration what your return on your investment is, you know, how much money, sorry, what your return on your investment is annually, also what you bought the property for, and it'll help you figure out if the cap rate on this deal is good enough to buy it. So I'm gonna break it down here for you. So part one, to figure out your cap rate or your capitalization rate, you need to figure out what your R, your uh, NOI is, right? Your, your net operating income. How much does it cost you to operate this property every single month minus the mortgage payment. So that's very important. You don't need to put into the more, you don't need to consider the mortgage payment when you're figuring out your uh, NOI, your net, net operating income. So again, for our example, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna figure out your monthly gross income, right? Going back to the sheet, our monthly gross income, like we talked about was $4,000 a month here, right? 2,000 up, 2,000 down. Again, that's gross, not net. Going back to this formula, um, you want to look at uh, also what's your what's your monthly operating income, right? What does it cost you every single month to operate this property minus the mortgage? Again, right? That's why I put that in brackets minus the mortgage payment. So if you go back here, if you take this here, your month, your uh, monthly taxes, your insurance, your uh, repair and maintenance, your property management, your rental vacancy percentages your budget, it's gonna give you that formula. It's gonna give you uh, $1,167. So again, to figure out your NOI, right? To, sorry, we're figuring out your capitalization rate, but in order to do that, you need to figure out your NOI. So in this example, it's basically your gross income minus your operating expenses. So, so again, looking at these numbers, that's $4,000 subtracting 1167, uh, which gives us a monthly ROI or NOI of 2833. Again, you wanna take your monthly figure. So our NOI monthly is 2833 a month, right? You take 2833 a month, Again, you always want to annualize it. So you take 2833, you multiply it by 12, 12 months, all right, times 12, which would give you a NOI of $33,996 in this example, right? This is what you need to know before you figure out your capitalization rate or, or cap rate, right? So then what you do is you take your NOI, and you wanna divide that over your purchase price to get your cap rate, right? So our NOI in this example was, again, let's go back here, 33,996, right? So here you go, 33,996, divided by 300,000, right? That's what we bought the property for. 
And 11, so that's gonna give you 11.33. Your time, you always take this and uh, multiply by 100 to give you an even number. So 11.33, so let's go back here. And again, you can see my cap rate here is 11.33. So in the real estate world, this is a good cap rate, right? And the way that it works is the, the better the area, you know, usually the more expensive the property, it's gonna give you a lower cap rate, right? Cap rates usually uh, in, a, in a general sense, uh, you can have high cash flow, but your purchase price is very low. So again, usually inner city areas of cities, they're gonna have better cap rates. That doesn't always mean it's a good deal, but this is just a metric, right? This is just a metric that you need to know when you're analyzing a deal. So again, on, on the deals that I have analyzed, the hundreds of properties that we have bought over the years, I look for cap rates around a six or a si sorry, not say a six to eight percent. If I can get a cap rate based on the area of a six to eight percent, that's healthy. Again, higher the better, but not always. Not always, but this is again a quick formula for you that you can use when you're analyzing a deal. Hey guys, thank you for watching that video. If you found a value from it and you want to learn more about some of the ins and outs when it comes to running numbers analyzing deals, finding off-market properties, raising capital. I'm gonna link up a playlist in our channel that goes over a swack of other videos that you can watch and implement and get some value from. Again, guys, we'll see you guys all in the next video.